Can you share your name? Joseph Einhorn. Okay, so talk about uh, where the fancy is going and sort of the future of social commerce. Thanks. So um, we are getting ready to roll out a marketplace, a commerce platform, so that any merchant and brand, any merchant or brand, can bid to fill the demand that's popping up throughout the day on our site or on our apps. And from the user's uh, perspective, the idea is that I'm learning about cool people and cool products um, through the social graph as opposed to by a topic or by a um, specific brand. And um, I would be able to add items to my shopping cart while staying inside of the fancy and check out and make payment and um, never have to leave and sign up to a hundred different websites to buy the various cool products that I see every day. So the brand itself that made that or another merchant could decide that they just want to capture some of that that interest and turn it into a sale? Correct. So the, uh, it's very similar to when you go to Google and you type in a keyword for boots and you see um, several different folks want to sell boots links against the uh, results there. But in our case, you might be looking at a pair of boots and um, whether it's whether the item that's available to buy is the that exact pair of boots or something that is um, similar, may, potentially by a competitor even, you'd be able to add it to your shopping cart and purchase in, inside of other sites. This sort of sounds like, I mean, I think uh, a reverse type of Groupon. I mean, would this be sort of that idea that you're you're taking interest uh, and then, you know, uh, figuring out how who wants to buy. I mean, instead of, I don't. Know, what, what, how do you describe this to people? Then what is the? Well, um, so yes, and I think um, the way that I'm, we're trying to de to describe this to people is, we want to turn commerce on its head. Um, in the up until now, buyers for different stores or websites have been telling us what we're allowed to buy and how much it costs and when we're allowed to buy it. And in this case, we're going to fancy the products or hotels that um, interest us, and then we're going to let the um, owners or the brands or the merchants come to us with um, the appropriate offer for us to acquire those things. Now, a lot of talk right now is around Pinterest and sort of some of the uh, comparisons has, have been with, with between the fancy and uh, has been with Pinterest. Talk about why this model might be the best way to do that and, and sort of how you differ from Pinterest. Well, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know which capabilities they have on their website in terms of a marketplace or commerce, but um, I think in general there's a lot of fantastic social networks where people are expressing themselves in uh, all kinds of ways ar around anything that um, comes to comes to mind and in our case we're kind of laser focused on stuff that uh, you could purchase and so uh, we have a lot of really cool tastemakers on our site who are discovering and sharing the coolest stuff in the world and then um, I think our users have an expectation um, especially now with the marketplace um, and with the commerce component built in that uh, when they're looking at something they're going to be able to click and buy it at the best possible price or the most appropriate deal while staying inside of the site. And I'm not sure, th I, think, I think we're, uh, you know, unique in, the, in that kind of functionality. I mean, ultimately, it seems, uh, sounds like Amazon, Google, Facebook, uh, other people would also want to move down this route. I mean, do you, how do you stay ahead of, of bigger competitors like that and sort of um, kind of capitalize on this idea? Well, what we're going to continue to do is try to create the best technical platform so that the contributors um, have, the, have the best tools um, in order to continue to express themselves around commerce and so that brands and merchants can continue to um, sort of fill that interest and fill that demand. And then, um, you know, we'll have, to see where, we'll have to see where that takes us in comparison to some of the different players. But what's happened in overall in the social commerce space? It seems like your feeling is that it really hasn't blossomed yet. I mean, is that your feeling or? I think it's early. I would say, you know, even before us launching this marketplace uh, functionality, we have over 400 deals that are live on our system today. If you fancy a certain amount of items from a certain brand, you get a discount code that you can then use on their website. So this is the next sort of um, natural extension for us. 
but uh, it's definitely early and uh, we're trying to be as creative about bringing a lot of these concepts to fruition as we can. So the company, you guys haven't really got a lot of PR and you guys haven't really chased any of that and it seems like when we first heard about you, you guys were um, revolved around Thing D and the database you're building and so can you talk a little bit more about just sort of the back end stuff that you're doing with, with that uh, sure. product? Our, our goal with this company um, is to you know, enable commerce um, in the most efficient way possible. So one of the core fundamentals of the company has been if we know about as many products in the world uh, as we can, we'll be best served to um, connect people to those products. And so the collecting uh, a product database is one aspect, and then another aspect is getting the meaningful signal of well, what does that stuff mean to users? And the fancy is all products or stuff that costs money that means something to a person. So um, if you think about it, um, there's a big sort of thing happening on the Internet between data collection on s systems like Google and then uh, people connections and curation on a system like Facebook. And so having a great database has some value and um, having a database combined with people's um, tastes and people's connection to that data may be more, um, more important at this time. Okay. And finally, so you raised a big round late last year. Can you talk a little bit more about that and uh, sort of what the, the investors will bring to this? Sure. We, um, PPR, which is the owner of Gucci and YSL, Balenciaga, Stella McCartney, Alexander McQueen, Christie's Auction House, Puma, and other brands. And the, um, the chairman and CEO of that company, Mr. Pino, has joined our board. And we were looking at our board, and we have a great group of people, and we really wanted to make sure that we had uh, the best minds from different disciplines. So we had bankers, and we had finance people, and we have consumer internet people, but we didn't really have commerce. So this um, individual in this company represents a big chunk of commerce. And um, that's why we did the deal, and we were fortunate enough, and uh, we're pretty thrilled about um, how that's going. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me.